welcome back to ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. China and Myanmar agreed to accelerate construction of economic corridor to arch bilateral relations. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Myanmar's Commander-in-Chief of Defense Services, Ping Aung Hlaing, agreed to accelerate the construction of the China and Myanmar economic corridor to boost bilateral ties. During the meeting, Wang says the main purpose of his trip is to communicate with Myanmar on implementing the results of Chinese President Xi Jinping's historic state visit last year when the two countries agreed to build the China and Myanmar community with a shared future and exchange views on developing bilateral ties in the next stage. China agrees with Myanmar in principle on implementing the action plan of building the China and Myanmar community with a shared future, hoping the Myanmar army can make new contributions to the common goal of the two countries. Wang adds, China decided to provide assistance of vaccines and medical supplies to help Myanmar fight the COVID-19 pandemic and encourage Chinese enterprises to carry out further vaccine cooperation with Myanmar. Meanwhile, Ming Ong Leng says Myanmar is glad to witness China's rising international status and influence will firmly enhance its all-around cooperation with China and support China's stance on its issues related to Taiwan, Hong Kong and Xinjiang. Myanmar's Commander-in-Chief of Defense Services, Myung Ong Leng, thanks China for its assistance in combating the pandemic. The top military official says the Myanmar army supports the two countries in conquering the influence of the pandemic and accelerating the construction of the China and Myanmar economic corridor. Wang is on foreign mission tour to Southeast Asia, which will also take him to Indonesia, Brunei, and the Philippines. At least 35 people killed, injured hundreds, and many things were damaged during the earthquake. Drone footage shot by an Indonesian TV network shows the scale of damage caused by 62-point magnitude quake, which hit Sulawesi Island, killing at least 35 people and injuring hundreds, trapping several under rubble and unleashing dozens of aftershocks as authorities warn of more quakes that could trigger a tsunami. The earthquake and aftershocks caused damage to more than 60 homes, two hotels and destroyed the Mitra Manakara hospitals and the governor's office in Mamuju, where local authorities tell Reuters several people remain trapped under the rubble. No tsunami warning or issues, but the Indonesia's Meteorology and Geophysics Agency says aftershocks could follow with the possibility that another powerful quake could trigger a tsunami. The quake struck 6 km, 3.73 miles northeast of the town Majene at a relatively shallow depth of 10 km just before 1.30 am, sending thousands of frightened residents out of their homes and fleeing for higher ground. Jokowi asks disaster victims come post earthquake on Sulawesi Island. Indonesian President Joko Widodo urges people at disaster zones to stay calm after 6.2 magnitude quake rock Sulawesi Island, killing at least 35 people and injuring hundreds. Saya atas nama pemerintah dan seluruh rakyat Indonesia menyampaikan duka yang I, in the name of Indonesian government and all the people of Indonesia, express our condolences to the victims who had passed away. I urge the people to stay calm and follow the instructions given by officials on the ground. The earthquake and aftershocks caused damage to more than 60 homes, two hotels and destroyed the Mitra Manakara Hospital and Governor's Office in Manuju where the local authorities tell Reuters several people remain trapped under the rubble. Jan Gelfan, International Federation of Red Cross Country Head of Indonesia, says the pandemic was likely to complicate the distribution of aid in the relatively remote area as well as impact the victims psychologically. As you know, the numbers of positive cases have skyrocketed as of late in Indonesia. We're lucky we don't have the, as far as we know, this new variant. But we don't want to, you know, you don't want to help people while you endanger and put at risk other people. So these are community members. We, we need to find that balance between getting services to people on one end of it and at the other to make sure that the people that we send are well protected and well taken care of. So we involve, we're including things like masks and other personal protection equipment and hand washing stations and all those kinds of things that, that have added that we would maybe not have thought about in, in other operations. 
no tsunami warning or issues, but the Indonesia's Meteorology and Geophysics Agency says aftershock could follow with the possibility to another powerful quake could trigger a tsunami. The quake struck 6 kilometers, 3.73 miles northeast of the town of Majene at a relatively shallow depth of 10 kilometers just before 1.30 a.m. sending thousands of frightened residents out of their homes and fleeing for higher ground. Indonesia rescue team pulls victims from hospital collapsed on Sulawesi Island. Local television reports Indonesian rescuers pull a survivor out from the rubble of a collapsed hospital building in Indonesia's Sulawesi Island after a 6.2 magnitude quake struck. The powerful earthquake killed at least 35 people and injured hundreds, trapping several under rubble and unleashing dozens of aftershocks as authorities warn of more quakes that could trigger a tsunami. Mitra Manakara Hospital, where the survivor's rescues collapse, along with the office of a regional governor. More than 300 homes and two hotels are also damaged. About 50,000 people fled their homes since the quake, the disaster agency says, with the coronavirus pandemic likely to complicate aid distribution. Straddling the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, Indonesia is regularly hit by earthquakes. In 2018, a devastating 6.2 magnitude quake and subsequent tsunami struck the city of Palu in Sulawesi, killing thousands. Indonesia is facing another volcanic eruption in East Java province with a length of 5-6 kilometers. <laughs> According to data from the Geological Agency at the country's Energy Ministry, a volcano in Indonesia's East Java province erupts, spewing ash and smoke as high as an estimate 5.6 kilometers into the sky. <laughs> Indonesia has nearly 130 active volcanoes, more than any other country. And while many show high levels of activity, it can be weeks or even months before an eruption. The Semeru mountain erupts at just past 5 p.m. local time. Videos posted on social media shows grey ash clouds towering over houses. The country's disaster mitigation agency did not immediately respond to a request for comment on the possibility of evacuation. Other volcanoes, such as the Merapi volcano on the island of Java and Sinabung on Sumatra, show signs of activity recently. Philippines and China vow cooperation for post-pandemic recovery. Foreign ministers of China and the Philippines commit to prioritize cooperation post-pandemic recovery efforts as senior Chinese diplomat Wang Yi wrap up a week-long visit to four Southeast Asian countries. Wang, in his opening remarks in a bilateral meeting with Manila's foreign minister, says, China is a friend of Philippines and your closest neighbor. We are firmly stand with the people of the Philippines until the defeat of this virus. Manila is buying 25 million doses of Sinovac Biotech's experimental COVID-19 vaccine, with the first 15,000 expect to arrive in February. With nearly 499,000 cases and almost 9,900 deaths, the Philippines the second highest COVID-19 infections and casualties in Southeast Asia after Indonesia. Philippines Foreign Minister Teodoro Loxin says in his speech, close cooperation to meet COVID-19 enhance overall ties and deepen the friendship between the two nations while cooperation on priority economic and infrastructure projects have resumed. Since taking office in 2016, President Rodrigo Duterte pursues warmer ties with China, setting aside a territorial spat in exchange for pledges of aid, loans and grants. Officials of the two countries signed an agreement for 500 million yuan or 77 million US dollar rent from China to fund the Philippines' livelihood infrastructure and other projects. It is the seventh grant from China to the Philippines since 2016, bringing the cumulative grants to 3.25 billion yuan. Wang Yi, the Chinese government's top diplomat, will visit Myanmar, Indonesia and Brunei. At least 12 workers trapped in China gold mine are still alive. According to a note retrieved from the site, the Chinese state media CCTV reports, citing local authorities that 12 workers who trapped underground after an explosion at gold mine in eastern China a week ago are still alive.
A total of 22 workers are trapped in the Hushan mine in Shandong province after the blast on January 10th. It's not until 30 hours later that the accident was reported, however leading to severe criticism of those responsible and sacking of two senior local officials. China Central Television footage shows the rescue team sending down the supplies including food, nutrient solution, flashlight, paper and pen using zip lines. Trapped workers sent up notes saying 11 people are safe, one injured and 10 still missing. Regarding to the pandemic, Japanese Prime Minister vows to protect medical system in the country. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says his government will take all possible measures to protect the country's medical system as hospitals creak under the strain of the COVID-19 pandemic. What is important is to provide necessary medical services to people in the need. We will exhaust all measures to safeguard the medical system. The head of the government adds this month issues a state of emergency for Tokyo and three surrounding prefectures in a bid to steam a resurgence of infections. He expands it to seven more prefectures including Osaka and Kyoto in western Japan. Japan, though, less seriously hit by the pandemic than many other advanced economies, prompting Japan Medical Association President Toshio Nakagawa to say the nation's medical system is collapsing. We will press ahead with the preparations, with the termination of building water fight anti-infectious measures and holding an event that can bring hope and courage to the world. According to the public broadcaster, NHK, total coronavirus cases in Japan have doubled over the past six weeks to about 330,000 with 4,525 fatalities. On diplomacy, Suga calls South Korea an important neighbor, but says bilateral ties are in a very severe situation. The president of South Korea urges the president of the United States to follow Trump's achievements who had negotiated with Kim Jong-un in 2018. South Korean President Moon Jae-in says that United States President-elect Joe Biden should hold talks with North Korea to build on progress that President Donald Trump had made with leader Kim Jong-un. Biden takes office on Wednesday, January 20, amid a prolonged stalemate in negotiations aimed at dismantling North Korea's nuclear and missile programs in exchange for United States sanctions relief. Moon, who had offered to be a mediator between Pyongyang and Washington, says he will seek an early chance to promote North Korea as Biden's foreign policy priority so that he will follow through on an agreement reached by Trump and Kim at their first summit in Singapore. The two leaders vowed to establish new relations and work toward complete the nuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, but their second summit and ensuing working levels talks fell apart. Moon also called for a diplomatic solution with Japan to prevent the planned sale of Japanese corporate assets to compensate victims of forced labor, saying it will be undesirable for bilateral relations. The two countries are at odds over legacies from Japan's 1910 till 1945 colonial rule, and some former laborers have secured a court order to seize domestic properties of Japanese firms. World Health Organization team tweet about their life in quarantine at Wuhan Hotel. An expert team of World Health Organization is currently undergoing mandatory quarantine in a designated hotel in central China's Wuhan city before they start conducting field work of their COVID-19 origin tracing trip. The team of 13 international experts from the World Health Organization arrived in Wuhan, once the hardest hit city in China by the epidemic, as part of an effort to trace the origins of the coronavirus. Some teams share clips of their life on Twitter while completing the two-week quarantine in the designated hotel. Dutch virologist Marion Koopmans posted a video showing a medical worker checking temperature every morning, while British-American zoologist Peter Dazak posts pictures of sunrise and his breakfast, noting that works and meeting have been packed in. 
The WHO team expects to work with the Chinese counterpart in a joint mission that aims to reconstruct how the pandemic unfolded and how to better prepare for emergent diseases in the future. Thank you for watching and please remember we are still in the pandemic era. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, maintain social distancing rule and use your masks. See you!